Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the meeting. It's um, March 21st, Board of Trustees. We'll call the meeting in order at 5.04, which is just like last time. I would entertain it now. I would entertain a um, motion for the adoption of minutes of March 3rd, 2022. I so move. Uh, I'll second any additions, subtractions, corrections on those minutes. Hearing none, may we vote please. I vote yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, we both I had the idea you would be calling. Yes, I thought so too, but <laughs> oh, me, oh, 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 I didn't uh, now I know. <laughs> I usually do, don't I? <laughs> That's all right. More times than not. We let's both say. voted for it. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're, yes. Hello, where am I? Hi. Okay, then All I right, would... I, I got it. Go ahead. Okay, now we're on a roll. Mm -hmm. I would entertain a motion to adopt min minutes of March 7th, 2022. I so move. I'll second. Any further discussion regarding those minutes? Mr. Hollister, what does that say up in the corner? Uh, that's your writing. I can't read it. Great, it says. <laughs> great. Great. That's the comment on the phone. Oh, that means the they're great. They're great. Yeah, that's what that means. Shall I call the roll? Uh, Can you call the If there were no other additions, <laughs> subtractions, or corrections, yes, please call the roll. Mm -hmm. no, Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, um, I would now entertain a motion to approve uh, payment of the bills, payment of, of the bills in the amount of fifty two thousand one hundred thirty seven dollars and thirty two cents, broken down general fund four thousand nine hundred forty four dollars forty one cents, fire fund thirty seven thousand nine hundred seventy dollars and fifty one cents, cemetery fund three thousand sixteen dollars and fifty five cents. EMS billing $1,453.08, Road and Bridge $4,752.77, and that is that. Is there a motion? Uh, I, I so move with discussion. All right, I'll second and now I'll open for discussion. Uh, I saw that one of the bills is from our attorney on the uh, solar project. Mm -hmm. Um, how hard would it be to put those in a folder and me to review those? Um, that would be very hard at all. Not, not, I mean, I'm, I'm for so paying it, but I want to know where some of it went. So, yeah, you want to, yeah, because it always includes like a second page, it's details, right. mm -hmm. all the, yeah. And he has said that he will Wow. You will continue to serve. But and that's good. Okay. Perhaps ban. That's good news. End of discussion. Discussion's over. May we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Major? Yes. Thank you. Um, correspondence. Well, let me ask Ms. Prosecuting Attorney if she has any business to be before us this evening, or are you? Um, no specific business this evening. I just hadn't been to one of your meetings in a while, so mm -hmm. I wanted to stop by and say hello and see if there's anything that we can do to help you guys out or anything you need from us. Appreciate that. Absolutely. I guess, not at the moment, mm -hmm. but we certainly do appreciate the visit. And Absolutely. please stay as long as you like. Sounds great. <laughs> Okay, correspondence this afternoon. Uh, we have a few things, and actually, I'm going to go through them because as I was looking at them, there's, there's more than a few that we would discuss, so we might as well discuss them as we go. So that's how. Okay. Uh, we had two Township Association legislative alerts. Um, both informative, but neither requiring any uh, 
further discussion. We did have a bulletin from the auditor of the state, uh, which did uh, discuss the alloc or the um, what will be the allocation of the opioid agreement funds, the 30% share of local government, 55% to the foundation that will distribute, distribute funds to projects and 15% to the office of the Ohio Attorney General because he likes money. Um, and as you recall from, I think, our last meeting that um, the state has been broken down into 14 different categories. Uh, we're in region four, 14, 19 regions, we're, we're in region 14 comprised of Butler, Clark, Claremont, Clinton, Green, Madison, and Warren counties. Uh, and they, they, Dick Gould, is soliciting uh, participants from Green County to, uh, to help divvy up the funds in that district. I, I uh, volunteered for that. I haven't heard back from today. Um, we have an Oprah's report, uh, which is very cheery because they made lots more money than they thought in their investments over the last year, and they're quite pleased about that. And all of us who are in Oprah's are quite pleased that they did. I'm thinking. Um, we had a substantial packet from the businessohio.gov about the broadband project that was approved by the state of Ohio recently, and now um, being uh, being distributed to the um, 11 different internet service providers uh, as part of the program, which is great. It was 233, 233 million, I think it was, 233 million dollars that was distributed. Well, what's this have to do with what we're doing now? Because or what the county's doing. Because the county did not get one penny of that money. So we have to go in alone without Ohio's share. I don't know why, but apparently. Green County didn't get any? Uh oh. Nope. I looked at the list I and I lots of counties did, but they didn't. Uh, the district advisory uh, committee met uh, when last. Wednesday, I believe, and had our yearly meeting and adopted all kinds of financial. I don't know what you're talking about. District. Oh, I'm sorry. The the Green County Public Health Department uh, has what's called a district advisory council, which is uh, comprised of the president of the board of the county commissioners, the chief executive of each municipal corporation, and consisting of a city health district and the chairman of the board of the township trustees of each township. Purchase of the district. Uh, advisory committee is to elect officers, appoint members of the Board of Health, and to consider annual or special Boards of Health reports. Uh, we did elect officers. I'm still the president uh, by default, I think. We did appoint members of the Board of Health. We had appointment two, and we did consider uh, the annual reports, which was the financial report and the the general annual report from the from the Board of Health. Uh, there are 23 representatives throughout the county. And uh, uh, this year we had 11, I believe. So it was a little slim, but got work done. In the um, annual report, which is distributed to everybody in the county, there's including us, which I got, that meeting, just a, a couple little facts about how much the uh, health department worked in the last uh, last year uh, in the war against COVID-19. For example, they distributed 114,256 vaccines um, and now 67.6% .6 of the county has, one, has had at least one dose. Uh, 104,421 received at least two doses. And uh, 45,106 or 26% of the county received a single dose of the J&J. &J. Uh, they distributed 395,370 different PPEs, gloves, gowns, and masks. They tested, conducted 2,000 uh, COVID tests in-house. In um, they reported 17,490 cases in, uh, in Green County for the Department of Health. Um, 
There were 254 deaths attributed to COVID-19. There were 200 clinics held and 400 home visitors where they actually went to an individual's home because they could not get arrangements to come to the health department to get, to get the vaccine, so they went to them. Uh, she also reports that our efforts helped to give Greene County the second highest vaccination rate in the state of Ohio. Well, so, congratulations to the well, second highest, yeah, not too shabby. Uh, this we can save for standing reports. Uh, we received a message from the um, US DOL about the audit that they're conducting on the health department's, um, or the health department, the fire department's payroll. Yeah. And Mr. DOL? DOL. The DOL. Department of Labor. Department of Labor. Mr. What is the background? Mr. 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 This routine, I, I don't remember hearing this. Mm -hmm. She reported it last June. But it's never been done before. Uh, right? Have you? Uh, yeah. Not that, not that since Colin I've been here. Oh, no. What? Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> How soon they forget. Um, wow. Our friend from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. This is the Department of Labor. Yeah, it's a federal department. They all were, you know, in cahoots. Uh, are you sure? Ooh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it was the I, I mean, ever, is this a follow up? Did they ever tell us or tell you if it was just routine or a complaint? I mean, what? No. So no. What, what triggered this? Determined whether or not he said. We tried to find it out last time. And we didn't. He, said his, he said that. Um, he first needs all this, all the documentation and, you know, answer all the questions that he had for his initial, to gather information. And after he has reviewed all that stuff, then he will tell us whether or not there actually is an issue. Or, or there is no issue. Yeah, it's a very funny process. That's kind of really really but, but there are some federal marshals here looking for you today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, That's a joke. The joke. It's a joke, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a twelve hundred dollars they're looking for. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, he just said after after his review, then he'll you know, maybe if there was somebody who had, who had asked for an investigation or something and upon review of what he you know everything we gave him he'll say nah, that was fruitless maybe i don't know we don't know but it did remind us under federal law cfr something that we can't retaliate against whistleblowers that's why we can't we'll let you know i hope it all works out Under Generic Road, there was a request from Mr. Eric Rose to have some confirmation that we actually will own the truck that we're getting retrofitted or getting fitted for the for the Township Road Department. <coughs> so I convinced them that yes, it was indeed for us. We also had a substantial packet of information from the Ohio Department of Transportation. Uh, Mr. Jack Marchbanks, uh, Dr. Jack Marchbanks, uh, informing us that the, we are potentially eligible to apply for the 2022 Township Safety Sign Upgrade Grant. Again? Mm -hmm. Here. Now we know. We got a first half settlement uh, report from uh, Auditor Graham, but we have no, oh, first half, half settlement for manufacturer homes in the, in the uh, township. Since we have no manufactured homes, we didn't get any uh, income from them. Apparently, there's some special five dollar something. We did get report of the, the full half year settlement from the auditor for our our own uses. We had uh, uh, two 
two pieces from the Ohio Power Siding Board regarding the Kingwood Solar Project. Can I peek at those? You may peek at those, certainly. Uh, we have late breaking um, correspondence. I submitted a um, request for the uh, current, well, current or next year, I don't know how it is, capital fund, the Ohio Capital Fund, to our uh, representative, Brian Lampton, uh, to uh, assist in whoa, substantiating the necessity for their distribution of up to $1.4 million to help construct Clifton, yeah, or Yellow Springs Clifton connector. So that went in today. Um, we have a uh, information packet from Burnham and Flowers about coverages that we have and changes in uh, something coverages. I don't know that too many changes, but we also have a, a contract that we need to sign with them and it is called the Intergovernmental Contract for the Administration of the Ohio Township Association Management Authority. And it requests uh, <coughs> it requests a signature of the duly elected representative of Miami Township and their title. Uh, it doesn't apparently do it by motion or <coughs> resolution, so I guess I'll just sign it and we'll send it back to Otaro. Okay. Any further correspondence in or out from the board? Hearing none, we will move to public comments on agenda items. Any member of the public here? Any, any member of the public here <laughs> that would like to comment on our agenda items? No pressure. No, it might, not, it might not strictly be an agenda. It's not an agenda. It's an old business. It's just the Kingwood update. Um, so we made it through all the scheduled testimony for the Kingwood hearing, the evidentiary hearing. It was it was a very painful week and a couple days. Seven days. Yeah. Um, so we got through all of the scheduled witnesses, and then the um, the Kingwood team asked to bring rebuttal witnesses. So that will take place April 25th and 26th, um, and then hopefully that will be done with all of the, that will be the end of all the testimony uh, that the judges will need to hear. Um, and then from there they, they file what are called post-hearing briefs, each party will do that. And then they, you know, rebriefs and <laughs> response briefs or whatever they are, uh, and then it's all given to the OPSB to to make their decision. I think the judge provides a, I think they call it a recommendation to yep. the board, mm -hmm. and then the board votes. Was the board in attendance during um, this? No. no. No, I didn't, it, well, you can't see all the attendees. Mm -hmm. um, you can see most of the legal counsel listed there. You can see the judges, uh, you can see the court reporter, but it's possible they were watching and you just couldn't, you But can't they weren't see called them. out as, as official attendees right they okay. are not so then the, the judge takes the information that was prevented presented prevented, presented and distills it down i guess or puts it in a logical package and then gives it to the board who makes a decision or the judge makes a recommendation for a decision so what the judges boil down and give to the board, I'm not sure. I've not mm -hmm. actually seen that as part of the public record. If it mm -hmm. is part of the public record, I've never opened it up to read it in any of the other cases. Oh. So I'm not sure mm -hmm. what form that will take. Um, and I don't know what they officially call what the judges come up with, whether it's a recommendation or, I, I believe it's a recommendation because um, they'll either say, you know, we recommend that you approve or deny. And then the board can make a decision from the, it doesn't have to be the same as whatever the judges mm -hmm. decide. And there's actually two judges that were present the whole time, so mm -hmm. they must work together and support each other. Now, can the board, to your knowledge, can the board come back and request further information or review of um, testimony, any of those things? That I don't know. Now, all of the testimony, 
that was given is part of the official record. It was transcribed, so if the board wants to look at that, they have access to that. Um, there isn't, I don't believe they post a recording of the hearings, but the, at least the transcript is there with all the exhibits that were presented and, and all of that. Don, can you add anything to that? Uh, there is one case that I'm aware of where once the power siding board, this is a, um, a wind farm up in Belfast, Logan County, mm -hmm. um, where citizens challenged the board's approval and went to the Ohio Supreme Court and they won. Mm -hmm. But, so there is precedent for whatever does whatever the power siding board does, one side or the other, can go to the Supreme Court to overturn. Yeah. They have so. to ask for a rehearing first, um, and then the OPSB can decide whether they want to approve the rehearing. And if so, you have to go through a whole. Other yeah, process. I hadn't heard about the rehearing. It, you have to at least request it first mm -hmm. before you can get to the Supreme Court. But then after that, you can. Interesting. It goes right to the Supreme Court. It doesn't go through any. That's my understanding. Please, none of that stuff. Huh. Uh, but it's people have exclaimed on seven days of testimony it was a little unusual. Hmm. It was definitely a testimony is quite not quite the right word. Questioning of those who had submitted written testimony. Yeah, the first round. You know how in a normal court. You sit up, someone sits up there and there the prosecutor asks them questions and they mm -hmm. answer. The first portion of that is actually handled in writing. And so it saves a bunch of, could you imagine how long it would have been if we hadn't done that? So that part's submitted in writing and then you, in the in-person activity starts with cross-examination of that initial testimony. Mm -hmm. um, and then recross and redirect and all, mm -hmm. all sorts of official terms, but mm -hmm. it made for a very, it was pretty exhausting, and I imagine the judges were worn out, and the, the attorneys were worn out. Everybody was worn out by the end of it. But almost there. Almost there. Thank you, public. <laughs> Any other public wanting to make comments? I don't hear anything else. Fire department report. Right. <clears throat> My apologies for not having the written report, but we were out burning some prairie today, so took a lot of my time. Mm -hmm. um, since the last meeting, we've had 32 EMS incidents and 11 fire. That's a lot. Yeah, they're busy. The kids have been busy. Uh, we burned the prairie Glen Forest Cemetery today without any death or destruction, so that was good. Including rabbits. Uh, yes. Yeah, they escaped. Um, I don't, we had a staff meeting today, and Denny and I have talked about this. We're appointing uh, good old Ted Wasserman to uh, acting sergeant position, um, as he's the one who covers on Wednesdays when the guys are off, the three full time officers are off on the telly, but there's no supervisor. Mm -hmm. Ted has been supervising, but since he doesn't really have any authority to do so, mm -hmm. he has problems convincing people to do what they need sometimes. So. He'll have a six month period where if we make or break, and if he does well, we'll bring him the resolution to appoint him fully. And it's no change in pay or none of that, it's still the same pay. But, um, that but position does not come with a sidearm, I think. Right? Uh, it's a shillelagh. Okay. That's much better. Old school Irish with that one. <laughs> so te he's technically acting, or what? He'll be an acting, yeah. Acting. I can appoint an acting person um, under our policies for acting, a sorry. permanent appointment. It takes um, it takes a vote. It takes um, what are you guys? It takes a resolution from the board. <laughs> I've said Congress. Sorry. We don't mess around with our fire department. You have to be congressionally appointed. Um, speaking of Congress, uh, I will be in Washington, Washington D.C., April fifth through eighth, on behalf of the Ohio Fire Chiefs, lobbying members of our congressional delegation. Um, the importance of supporting Ohio's first responders. 
We're apparently now meeting with 12 of the 15 reps, or well, more likely their staffs. Um, initially, none of the Democrats would meet with us because apparently they're terrified of COVID, but that seems to have changed. So I don't know how many Democrats there are in our congressional but I don't think a whole lot. Three, four, four, three, five. Those are okay, three. I think we're meeting with one of them now. So, and then uh, we're apparently having coffee with uh, the two senators' staff. So, uh, I've never done any of these before. So, will you be there on a Thursday? Yes. Sheriff sure. Brown has an open house Thursday. We go on t Tuesday, Shangri-La Hotel, and then Wednesday and Thursday. It's during the Congressional Fire Services Institute annual meeting. These things are normally done, so it'll be interesting. Is there any chance we could build the Ohio Fire Chiefs Association for mm -hmm. payroll lost? I would like to do it, but I don't think anything's going to happen. Personnel <laughs> over a course of the year, which might hey, be. Hey, you kidding? I, you know, you know, every time I go anywhere, all I can do is say how wonderful it is to work for my township. <laughs> with a supportive board of trustees. You, you can't buy coffee with that. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> I've tried, but it doesn't work. Well, at least when we schmooze Mike DeWine and do who I was. So All right, well, we'll see in May then. Yeah, or whenever it was. Well, hopefully I'll make it back from D.C. <laughs> I don't know. At least they're not trying to squeeze six of us into one car to drive there together. But that was my concern. And then last but not least, uh, our three fire investigators, um, Denny, Nate, and uh, Chris, mm -hmm. um, will be going, uh, doing a three-day uh, continuing education training. Shh, not sharing, but uh, Coleraine Continuing education oh, training. training. I thought you said container, like, That's what is I this a new thing? It's a container fires. But it's continue education training on vehicle fire investigation. That'll get them uh, each credentialed in, in that subspecialty. So well, who's going to run the store? I guess I will. Me. Me and Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's in June sometimes. Okay. And that's all I have. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anything for the fireman? Nope. I was looking for the new lobby panels. Did I, I, did I miss them? They're under construction. I'll contact Solar Tint and find out where they are because two weeks ago they sent me the, the latest proof that fixed that grammatical error. Yeah, there was well, I guess, there was a, up, right? I guess it's not a grammatical error. They just hyphenated the word professionally. You didn't spell your name right? No, it looked very really weird to have. professionally on it. Professional and it was yeah. professional profession hyphen alley on a different line. It just looked bad. Uh, yeah. yeah. Good, good but initially, good I was like, well, no one would notice except me. But then I was like, no, everyone here is going to notice. So I'll call Susan, the sales room, and find out where, where they are. How's, um, how's our new medic coming? Is it ordered yet? Uh, we have the drawings in uh -huh. for it, and uh, Pet Care is supposed to have a Price estimate for Denny next week, I believe. So, next yeah. week, I should say the world's fastest freaking process. Mm -hmm. but, okay. At least we have drawings, so we'll know what to look like. <laughs> That's special. <laughs> uh, you weren't here on the day. I don't remember which meeting it was about Clifton and the roof and the training and all the rest of those good things that are coming. Correct. Are you up to speed on? I have had emails with Alex, uh, uh, the mayor, the honorable mayor, Alex. Mayor. Yes, very. And uh, I have since met with Chief Miller of Cedarville mm -hmm. at the closing station to oh. discuss construction priorities, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I need to type it up and send that to uh, the honorable mayor of Clifton mm -hmm. so that he can submit to whatever he's submitting to. I guess that's county. Well, he yeah. said he had spoken with. He says Rick Rick Rallis is uh, all excited, and so Rick's excited. Chief Miller and I have the high end, and then we have the <laughs> the low end, <laughs> and there's a medium end as well. So oh. we'll see uh, how much money I'll have the honorable mayor is able to get out of the county. I've heard you know money's tight. 
Yeah, they're, they're on a shoestring, that's for sure. <laughs> no comment over there. No comment. <laughs> but it's very exciting if, you know, if the village is able to get even a little bit of money out of the county. It's not going all into the Clifton Craft Store, Craft House. Your, your place? <laughs> yeah. He didn't mention that to me, but who knows? <laughs> I'll bet there's a big, big ask there. Um, has the roof been fixed? Is it going to be fixed? Do you know anything about the roof? That I do not know. Um, when I was over there last week with Chief Miller, uh, Warren, there was no one there. It was mm -hmm. like there was crew on the roof, but I don't. I haven't been by there mm -hmm. or heard from Alex how quickly that company was going to start. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. So everything's fine then. At, at as fine as it can be. Okay. We're um, going to schedule probably in April on a Saturday. Actually, I'm going to coordinate with you, Ben. Um, but it's just a cleanup day mm -hmm. at the station. And we thought we could, is there like a good day to put things in your dumpster? Mm -hmm. So wait, wait a minute, you're talking about a clean-up day at the Clifton? Station. The station. Not the what day? <laughs> For the station, what, what, what day again? We're not sure yet. Um, Chief Miller and I have to set that up because he wants to make sure his volunteer senior students are free labor. So. We'll give him some pizzas or something. They have to your milk for Okay. Cool. All right, so if we do it on the weekend, that should be fine. Hmm? I mean, there's not that much stuff there to get rid of. So. Would, would there be value in a formal resolution from Miami Township supporting the request for funds for the roof? Oh, well, the roof's already funded. Yeah, we, we, we approved that. We approved. Oh, excuse but me. The, the fund, so we're, yeah, funds are to support the construction. Would there be value in a formal resolution supporting money for the uh, joint training? I don't think it could hurt, but I, I don't know the details at this point of what the village is, you know, what the village is. So we should make that offer to, to Alex. Yeah, yeah later. Because he's, he's okay. spearheading it, right? I'll I mean, talk to him. As far as, I mean, yeah, he's been my point of contact and yeah. it seems to be very exciting. Yeah. And has a lot of ideas, so. I have to email him anyway tomorrow with all the lists, so I can put that in there if you like, or if you guys want to reach sure. out. Sure. Well, go, go ahead and I'll reach out. Okay. All right. Anything else? Let's move to the cemetery report. Well, in our last <clears throat> meeting, we've had three burials, two edges and one full, which was a natural. We're going to have a burial Wednesday in Clifton and one here Saturday in Glenpool. Full burial. Both of them? Yep. Mm -hmm. We're trying to work on stones and the fence tomorrow. We'll mm -hmm. pick up flowers and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It is after the 15th. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And that's our schedule. And I'd like to work in the natural area. The weather, where I can do. Did you get back to look at any of it? Yeah. Is that as far as you got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's as far as I was going, but. I wasn't able to just really to get back. Um, this is not, I don't, I don't want this to sound wrong, but tell me what you did back there. I pushed over some trees, rooted some trees, cleaned the path so he could put his fence in. He wanted an area like I did on the where he's got his fence now. I went in and cleared it so he could set his fence. Okay, so you're, you, you were back in front of the pines. In front of the pines. Mm -hmm. And did he make a commitment on when to when he moved the fence? Not when he's going to move it, but I said, you know, soon I'm going to get in here and work. Mm -hmm. I can go through his gate and no. work, but we yeah. don't have a lock, you know, so I can call him and get unlock it because I can get in there. But if his fence was moved, I wouldn't have to yeah. bother him. Okay, I wonder. Um, you know, this is a, a, a sticky subject and we, and we talk about it all the time, but if wishes were horses, I know beggars would ride, but I'm sure we'd be nice. You haven't heard that? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Write it down correctly. I, I 
wish we didn't have people, or I wish we'd tell people when they do put big monuments on the natural burial site, that they have to come and take them away. Because they're, they, they, read the, they read the requirements, and they agreed, and then they came and put a big stone where it shouldn't be. You're talking about the one on the back? Yeah. Well, I'm talking about all of them that are now, there's a bunch of them. I told them their size dimension. You know, this is what it can be. It can't be a giant boulder, is it? We have three in one spot, which should be there. We were wondering about that today, actually. But we are. Not, we weren't informed that there was going to be extras. We, it just we, showed up here. We are going to need to talk to the owner of that. Yeah. Okay. And ask them to. I don't know how to get a hold of them, but they just showed up. They wouldn't, you know, discuss any of that. That's what he could have. And what he sees, what, what can. Then, then we'll just take it. We'll just have to move. Yeah. And the owner of the plot. At one point, we would have had an address for it. We may still. I don't know how closely we keep Well, if they pay by a check, I make a copy of all the checks that I receive. So, lots of times the check has an address on it. Mm -hmm. you know, contact information. I don't know who you guys talk about. We, yeah. we can well, talk amongst ourselves. Sure. All right, well, let's, let's do that. So was this, was this a recent burial, or? Oh, year, year or so ago. Last year, was it 20 or 20, whatever, I don't remember. Somewhere 20, 20, mm -hmm. and, you know, This is what you can have, okay. And they show up in there. Didn't be give me information of who, you know, mm -hmm. okay, we'll take care of that. And you know, and going forward, the you know people who may question you about types of monuments allowed, you know, and you might have the idea that they're considering something out of the ordinary or uh, or unique. Um, you know, make it a point. Say, you know, it has to be no higher than three inches of, off the ground. And if it is, it's got to go. We've brought. People bring in and yep. use as a headstone. I know they can't do that because they're more than three inches above the ground, and that's what it says in the in the uh, requirements that we would give them. Uh, Colin commented today. I, I saw the fire, and mm -hmm. unfortunately, I came after all the flame was gone. Uh, that there is a wood. Uh, right, the marker. Who then, covered it last year and I forgot to do it again this year. Well, they covered it this year during the fire. Yeah, he took care of it. It survived. Yeah. But I was impressed. It's deteriorating. That's a temporary point. Yeah, yeah. It's it's okay. For the definitely was. Right. Great. And the, the grave owners are very supportive of our natural burial efforts and the efforts to uh, burn the. Uh, Cemetery to try and control the bad stuff. So they know what's going on. I wish they knew some other things about that. Okay. Anything else for the cemetery? Do we have enough information on our website about the natural? Do they ask a question when there's no map? I refer them to the website. Well, I looked and they didn't say anything about this and that. Well, it does say the the stone must be flat, must be a natural material. I feel all of them. It can't be on there. there. The dimensions are on. Yeah. What else do we need? What else I, I just didn't know if there was anything else that we should have on there. I know we don't have a map on there. No. Um, um, I'm sure we could figure out how to put a map in there. The only information I really give them is price and, you know, and how we do things and the stone dimension and the regulation. Like don't polish them and they show up polished in. So what am I supposed to do with those? Yes, you can. I mean, you could. 
Yeah, I mean, yes, you could. You, you have that responsibility to follow the directions that are put out by the cemetery board of what's appropriate and what's not. It's, it would be the same as if somebody came and put a zillion whirly gigs on it. You know, we, we take those down too. You know, we either ask them or we take them down. I, I realize it's an uncomfortable position. Uh, I, I wouldn't like to be in it. But hopefully, I, I'm thinking hopefully we can maybe fend off a little of that before it gets on. No more job signing um, on. No, no, it just be the rough. It is what it has to be. Yeah. It, it just can't be. I don't think it needs to be flat. Okay. Maybe the people that, um, you know, go through that process, um, they don't really read the regulations, you know, they're busy taking care of business. Grieving. You know? Yeah, right. Yep. You know, and it has to be done in a timely fashion because it's natural and they just don't get to page three of the rules and regulations. So maybe a reminder to people that are... Yeah. Well, just start laying on. Here's what you can have, that's it. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't know you know, we can send reminders to if you know who they are, look, this is this, and so... Anyway. I mean, I think we... I think we bend over backwards for uh, bereaved family and acquaintances or whoever to try and look a little bit the other way about, I mean, on the normal cemeteries, not, not so much the natural, although we're getting to that point, that's what I'm a little concerned about because we're starting to get some of the decaws and Jim Cratchies. In the regular? No, in the natural. Um, but in the regular, you know, you're not supposed to have any of that except for, you know, grass, uh, you know. Yeah, I understand. I'm just saying I can imagine people Yeah, well, they don't. And, you know, if you, you know, come on later, the, they think about something and they, oh, let's put this there. If you take the, the long-range view of it, these people are going to, you know, if you let them grieve for as long as they need to, find it, maybe it's 10 years, but then after that, you know, we just put the center or put the yeah, back the way it's supposed to be. You know, uh, they can't really do anything outside of that old narrow little spot, and then and then we do it. You know, we do it then. You know, if it's that important to them, you know, we don't want to be that no, I much of a police force. Natural burial areas, or yeah, yeah, like that's that. a little yeah, that's that's, that's cool. a little more. Well, we rules. Yeah. We, Kind of, kind of a new that, thing. You know, things show up without there. Well, we wanted to be able to. I mean, the the, the reason for the flat stones was, was so we could mow, if you know, if necessary, mm -hmm. uh, in in the area. And we haven't had to do that for a while. And now it gets a little more difficult because you got stones here and there, and they're not all in a row. Like, okay, well. Boy, this area because there's the stones. Well, no, they're evenly spaced apart where they are. You know, they're all ten foot apart. They're, they're still there. You talk about the natural. Yeah, but they may be back. They may be back in the. Well, we said we put them on towards the, the walkway because you can't find them when they're. In, and yeah. yet, so we start doing it. And I tell everybody that it'll go here. Okay. One last thing, if it's. Uh, Fit your schedule sometime soon. Um, maybe Brandon could go and straighten up the um, scattering garden a bit. Oh, sure. Um, sure. And I don't know if we take just a couple of five gallon jugs or something. And uh, you know, we've been fighting this since the things were put up, but there's an awful lot of droppings, an oh, awful oh, lot on the, the monument. And it just, you know, mm -hmm. it just it was terrible. Okay. <clears throat> I noticed that driving by last night. We said clean them off. I think the gate pizza drop me from getting there, but we can okay. clean them a little more often. You know, those pins are still there. I don't know. Those birds must be just perched right on top of them. Maybe they're just hovering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fly by. Fly by. Fly by. Fly by. Fly by. Okay. Anything else for Mr. Cemetery? How about Mr. Road? Um, we've got a couple potholes here now. They're small. 
break it is, but uh, Xenia has borrowed our crack fill machine. So then we got it. Neighbors, yeah. If they, as long as they take some of that asphalt, I'm trying to get them. Back, so I, they said they've got some, but they're, they're willing to maybe use some of that. Use it, so. We got to sometime, I guess, some trees on Bryant Park and we'll take down where they come down and take our guardrail out. Mm. Okay, and that's about it. We got two pieces to replace and three posts for somebody. We just replaced three and they hit the guardrail. Broke all three. We replaced five, they broke three. Really? The cloud was pretty good. They did hurt the guardrail. Okay. So, you can stream more post. Are you saying we have more patch uh, blacktop than what we're going to need? Why, why did you just, what did you just say about getting Xena to take some blacktop? No, they took our crack food. Our I know, crack. then. Well, asphalt. It's crack fill material, is what he's talking about. It's boxes. liquid tar. Yeah, he put it in. Okay, because I was thinking Yellow Springs would. That's why we could use it. some donation without. Especially over oh, here on the South High Street. Black top. Yeah, they could. Yeah, they could. I have a general question when you're done with. Specific report. Okay. Well, I have How um, Clifton pays us um, by the hour for plowing in the village and for some street repair, mm -hmm. right? How much is that roughly a year? That's ballpark. Uh, salt and snow, snow and salt, ice and snow removal is probably. Is it that high? I don't think no. so. It's three thousand at least. Maybe. Yeah. So probably yeah, probably like three thousand, three five hundred. And that gets billed monthly. Just once, once a year. Once a year. Which we haven't billed them yet. But you will be. And we you, will be. So when you're answering my question, you seem to be careful to say that snow plowing and salt was about such and such. How often do we do a pothole or a road edge or something like that? Well, we do potholes. We just we fill the potholes. You know, and we just that send that in the same bill. Okay, we wait, now we'll, do we wait for them to request it or do we just do it? We need to just send a bill to the first of the year. Well, not this time of year. But I mean, do we get phone calls saying, Hey, there's a hole in front of my house. No, kind of word of mouth. Somebody says something. Oh, where we see it. So I'm, what I'm hearing is it's pretty minor. <clears throat> Just curious what the now we'll be scale was. Doing some wedging for them. Now that we charge them labor, you know, I think we're going to be wedging. we be tracking stuff. And that'll right. probably be a, a separate bill for me. This one, when we do the wedge, we'll probably give them that bill earlier because mm -hmm. we have to pay it. Be reimbursed. Okay, thanks. Any three questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. One last thing. Uh, I managed to get around all the roads yesterday and I thought they all looked really, really, really good. I didn't see any potholes where I was Small stuff, North River Road, South River Road, they're just small. Mm -hmm. Run around there before they get any bigger. I was looking for something to report to keep you on your toes. You gave us something to do today. You said you were. You what? Do it do it first thing for you. If, if I don't, you know, then what they do is they go back by the salt shed and sit there and smoke cigars. You know, if people can't see it. Eat bonbons. Yeah, we don't know what they're doing. So, yes, I do. I went down Houston Road. I don't know if you had been there, but there's a couple of good side branches yeah, that are sitting together. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Because was, was, they were right on the edge of the road. Yeah, that by the way, that Scarver's house. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, take care of it. Okay, great. Uh, like I say, other than that, 
There's still a little bit left for harvest, and he forgot he'd come back and get that. It's all work. Yeah, I saw that sitting out. I figured I'm he was going to let him take it. He said, oh, I'd like to have that, but the day we talked to him, his wife said, I think you've got enough. So it's like, <laughs> Sign lifting those by himself. I wouldn't be. I after I saw the bombs left over, I thought he must hurt himself and gave yeah, up. He took those and chained them, and took them up to his house for it. He had plenty of. I watched him heaving those things into the trailer. It looked horrible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. This cloth is yours, report. Mm -hmm. We have two resolutions. Mm -hmm. The first one is. Um, Totally related to the the first half of settlement of um, property taxes that we received, and unbeknownst to we all, whatever they, some years we have elective expenses of, included in that, and sometimes we don't. Mm -hmm. And um, same with the general bond. Anyway, retirement, and we hadn't appropriated any money there. So bottom line is resolution twenty twenty two dash fifteen. Amendment of permanent appropriations, where is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize admitting the following appropriations in the general fund. I added $951.66 in the general bond retirement fund, and contingencies, I increased it by $234.46. My township trustees authorize the fiscal officer to do so immediately. And had a motion to approve I, resolution I 2215. So there is a motion, I'll second that, for the discussion regarding this resolution. Yes. Go for it. I don't remember seeing a line item in the past for election expenses. Oh, yeah. It's there, but it's not always been. So you're saying always, that it, always it, it hasn't always been included? No, it's, it, yeah, this it's time not, it, yeah, it's not always been included. It, well, okay. no, it's it's always on the appropriation. Right, but it's never, but, but. There but, may not be. But they don't, but they don't always ask for, I think it's maybe just the first settlement of the year, maybe, I'm not sure, it's just not always, we always, always need to appropriate money in that. <laughs> oh, that was, just for clarification, I'm not opposing it. And what's the 234.46? That for? was, um, I think it just said of treasurer fees. Oh, so we have to pay them to collect money. Yeah, we all, yeah, and we've appropriated money in those line mm -hmm. items. Mm -hmm. But this was just kind of freak. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it's not a big deal. We still got our money. <laughs> but yeah, there's when, when we get a, a property tax settlement like that, you get you get your monies, and then you also have to pay fees, treasurer fees, and sometimes election expenses, and you have to pay to get the money. They, t they take stuff out. Health departments, whatever Health department. stuff. Yeah. I think we pay the auditor too, some, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. auditor, treasurer fees, yep, yeah, some of the health district. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion regarding this resolution? Hearing none, may we vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Thank you. And, um, speaking of the auditor's office, um, they now would like the opportunity to have this money or for our next property tax settlement um, and whatever else they want to pay us. <laughs> um, they just want us to, they offered to have it just automatically deposited to our account. And um, so I said yes. There's a form I had to fill out. But we have, they asked for a resolution that goes with it. Mm -hmm. And it says, um, authorization agreement for automatic ACH debits or credits, political subdivision's name. We know that. I hereby authorize the Green County Auditor and the Green County Treasurer here and after called Auditor Treasurer to initiate credit deposit entries. And then, um, you know, or if there's a, you know, whatever, debits, anyway. And um, they said to fill this form, but they asked for a resolution authorizing it for their file. So I made a resolution. Is that legal? What? The, for them to do that? Yeah, why not? I don't, I don't know if we had a legal opinion about prosecutor whether it was or not. <laughs> um, I was actually going <clears> to <throat> question the debit part. Well, that would be, like I said, like, you know, when they, when they send me, when you, see, you get the form that tells you wh how much the road's getting, right, and how much Joe fund, how much fire gets. There's also fees attached to that. Mm -hmm. It's processing and whatnot. And so 
that's why you want. I mean, I, it would, it in would my just, own accounts, my at home, mm -hmm. private stuff, I refuse to authorize someone to withdraw from my bank account. That's okay. They are allowed to automatically deposit. And I feel like we should have to have a resolution if we were making, if we're paying a fee. Um, a lot, a lot of, a lot of, it's a lot, resolution of right there. a lot of things um, automatically, a lot of things, not a lot, but um, I pay our dental insurance mm -hmm. on, with an automatic withdrawal. I pay yep. our well, health insurance with an automatic wait, withdrawal. Wait, wait, we, we pay. I pay. That's <laughs> automatic. And per but if the they bank. say you owe more, they can't draw without our authorizing on the insurance. Do they send a state? There's a statement attached to it. They don't just willy nilly post about it. And all of Collins um, um, EMS billing through Med Account Management is all automatically deposited. Okay. So I mean, that doesn't it's an automatic. Do they statement. have permission just to say, oh, we made a mistake, we're going to take more? No. Well, this is what we're authorizing. No, no. And you I, say I, credit and debit. Again, I, the debit for this situation is the fees that come along with our property tax settlements. It's just, uh, it's not a mistake. It's the cost of getting the money, or they, they just take money out for, I can show you with a spreadsheet of what okay. they're taking but money. Do you, do, you, do you get what I'm concerned about? I know and it's a technicality. I, I guess, I, I, no, not really, because I, I, what I hear you saying is that they could just they could just willy nilly take whatever they want, and we'll never know. Well, we would know, but then we would have we would have no way to contest it. Can always contest, but uh, <laughs> well, then what's the concern? Well, my concern is. No, I've got it. <clears throat> to deposit automatically, but to me, issuing a debit means withdrawing. It does. It isn't actually withdrawing. It's it's reducing the deposit by the amount of the of the uh, fee. Okay, that's different to me than accessing the account and taking something extra out. To me, when you say a debit, that's what we're authorizing. Well, yeah, I, I mean, it, like I said, there is a, um, you get a piece of paper, this documentation, that mm -hmm. shows you what they're going to, what they, we need to back out of it, kind of thing, and how, mm -hmm. in the, how you end up with this much money in the long run. If, if then a week later they said, oh, we didn't calculate that right. Well, they Can they make a correction without our authorizing it? Well, they would make. They would tell us first. Yes. You would think. Or they take anything out. Right, and they need to. Have, they need to, you know, put it in writing. I mean, there's times when you know there's been some sort of um, withdrawal on our checking account or whatever, and I don't recognize it because some of the med account management stuff isn't um, directly through them, it might be mm -hmm. through some other, you know, well, group, and so I track it maybe down. Maybe my concern is totally silly, but it's... I, I, I don't know, I don't know. To me, I guess this is about the county auditor's office and treasurers and I... I if you can't trust the government, who can you trust? My neighbor. <laughs> well, does your neighbor have $537,000 that he could have given us last week? Well, I mean, I mean, if you're not comfortable, Don, okay, well. if you're not comfortable, then you know we can we can table this and maybe you know have a chat with Marilyn when she comes back and maybe. Well, I'd rather have a chat with the auditor. Whatever, it's not yeah. an emergency. I, I mean, I'm. Wait a minute, we you know what? We've already got our money. This is just this for like six months down the road. Okay, let's let's talk further. Okay, I'm we'll just sorry for now. I'll just, yeah. 
as long as we're talking legalities and the product. Uh oh, what did I do? The, no, you, no <laughs> you're out for the moment. <laughs> But you said you well, we have our prosecutor here, so she might be in for the moment. I did just show it to her and see if well, she's seen it. And, you know. Yeah, no, that's, I'm talking about something else. Oh, okay. Do you recall that uh, not very long ago we had a discussion uh, regarding the uh, legality or uh, about, about giving us the bill for our health insurance and us paying it and then being reimbursed? And oh. was that to include also like the dental? Um, coverage that we, that we get, should we pay for that and then get reimbursed? And then all the other employees, should they pay for their, should they pay for their? Dental um, comes out right directly out of their checks. Okay, well it used to, uh, it didn't come right out of my checks. Okay, yeah, it does, well, yeah. okay well what, whatever. But all the other employees in the township, should they pay for their health insurance and then you reimburse them? What's the difference? I haven't done that. You haven't done what? I haven't asked. I haven't. I have not passed that bill on to them and said you got to pay this first, and then I will reimburse you. I haven't done that with. I know, but why do we have to do it? That is, we being with trustees. Probably we all should be doing it. I guess. I mean, that was a, that was a cat. That was a state auditor recommendation. Okay, but would you would you dig that out, perhaps and run that question by our prosecutor? Have you, have you run into that? Um, I have not read that specific document. I am familiar with how um, healthcare reimbursements work and things of that nature. What I can do, let me give you my card again so you have my email. Mm -hmm. If you forward that document to me, I'll take a look at it and make sure I know exactly what you guys are talking about. Well, uh, forever, yeah. if an employee is covered by the township, let's say Anthem Blue Cross, then every month the Anthem Blue Cross bill would come in, we would pay it, and they would get their coverage and everyone would be happy. As of a couple of months ago, in this parent audit, auditor's uh, uh, letter um, notice, now at least the, the elected officials are required to pay out of pocket that expense, and then, and then request reimbursement from the fiscal officer, as it's opposed to having it having it paid directly. And we don't understand why. Right. Number one, why it's for tra for elected officials, if that's the only, and if not, why isn't it across the board everybody else too? Not that we want it to be. Because you get, no. you guys, they get, um, they as in Chris and Don, get, there, there's a separate invoice that comes just for them through Anthem because they're over 65. Right. You know, yes. and so, but um, for everybody else, as, as youngsters, <coughs> it all comes in one, you know, one bill from Anthem each month. And that's the way I would do pay. I just pay the whole bill and um, be done with it. Um, <coughs> but I will, yeah, that was in the latest. I mean, we've been doing it differently for so many years. And I don't know if it's a new thing or. Okay. It just, yeah, it was the first time I just thought I'd bring that up. Um, as long as we had someone here from our. Yeah, recommendation or whatever they call it. A, yeah, this, absolutely. This yeah, I can look into it for you guys. All right, anything else? It'd be easier if we didn't have to. Oh, yeah. Fiscal officer? No. Thank you. Um, oh, we have, I guess we do. Um, I want this. I want to go ahead and have this resolution passed. So I need a resolution number. This well, one has been sitting on our table for quite a while. I think well, because since since we're scratching 2022-16 for now. Postponed. Yeah, we're tabling it. So this would become 2022-16. Mm -hmm. and, and which one is this? This is the one um, about the, uh, the ARPA funds. Mm. And we are, going to, we are going to, by resolution, decide that we will take the 
ten million dollar cap, and instead of itemizing the, the different ways that we're going to uh, spend the money, that I mean that basically boils down to just a, just four page thing. So I don't. This is our only copy. I don't want to make a. I don't want to make a copy before we do it. So I'm not going to write on here. But I'm going to entertain a motion to pass resolution 20. 2022-16. And so remind me that this is the, we are taking the option of being being under $10 million. Uh -huh. uh, we're, we're not going to, taking the option of not having to specify that yeah. these expenses were specific. A particular COVID expense. Correct. COVID triggered expense. Correct. But this is not specifying where the money's going. No, it's just. No, it's just a blanket yep. thing. No, that's been sitting on the table. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. That's, that's it. it. Okay. Did we move? Uh, I so move. I'll second. Any further discussion? I guess we have it. May we vote, please? Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. No, we don't do anything with this, just, I guess we just file it, and if we ever needed to show it to anybody, you know, to an audit or something. I would like to send it to anybody. No. No. Oh. That's not easy. Okay. And, and then remind me, when is it still that we have to appropriate? Well, next, next, I think it's 2024. December 31st, 2024. But I believe I have to make a, I, I believe I have to make, because I'm the authorized, whatever the thing is, I believe I have to make a report um, before April 1, just saying we didn't spend any money. We didn't, I mean, we received it, but we didn't spend it, so it rolls over into mm -hmm. the next, next pot. And right now that's in our general fund? The first, yeah, the first year, the mm -hmm. first half, yes. And then the Township Association also put out a sample resolution as far as when you're actually allocating funds. I think that's what this one is. I'm yeah. pretty sure that's where I got it. And then actually the money is in its own fund. Hmm? It's actually in a separate fund. Okay. The American Rescue Plan. Mm -hmm. They just, you and me the number. I'll take that resolution. Okay. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Mm -hmm. um, Zone inspectors report. I had that was last time. Yeah, I had one one little item of zoning. Well, I guess it could be standing committee report. Also, this is going to be difficult. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Just what tell, just tell us, and we'll tell you. Then we'll get a quarter. Just tell us, and then we'll tell you where to put it. Okay. Um, the regional planning, the Green County Regional Planning and Coordinating Commission. Reviewed the submission of the Miami Township Zoning Commission on their re-fixed uh, PUD section that they're that they're reviewing for for considering recommending to change our zoning code to us. And the Regional Planning Commission approved their revisions. Uh, un, unchanged, so it now goes back to our zoning commission uh, with that recommendation, and our zoning commission can then have their public hearing um, before sending it on to us, sending their recommendation on to us whether to approve or deny it uh, for our zoning code. Then we'll have our public hearing for that. So that's the Information. So which one was that under? That's under regional planning. Because you, you sit on it and you reported okay. it. All right. So Good segue. Forget the zoning factors. Okay. Yeah. And segue into standing committee reports. Uh, MVRPC, uh, I did not attend the last meeting. I had a death in the family, so I missed that one. Uh, and from now on, Marilyn will uh, be in that chair. Um, oh, she's going to be chair. No, she'll be in she'll be the, chair. the chair. She'll be sitting in the chair. And you. <laughs> I just couldn't resist. Um, well, the 
our PCC, that was probably the highlight of it, was the Miami mm -hmm. Township. Everything else was just chicken feet. Clifton Union Cemetery. Now, this is probably a good report. Clifton Union Cemetery. Uh -huh. uh, well, not a formal report, but I do know that uh, Ryan King, who, who is the Clifton resident who's on the board? Thomas Waddle. No. Oh, Letha. 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 Sorry, yes. Letha has sold her house and has moved into a smaller house in Clifton. Wow. And the woman she bought, so who she sold her place to, was here for meeting our zoning inspector earlier today. Oh. You met her as yes. Well. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not part of this formal report. It's it's Richard Chauvin. It has nothing to do with the Clifton Union Cemetery. Good. Uh, but it's, it's, it was kind of an interesting small town Theo. circle of people coming in to get permission to do something on their property. Um, so there was not a Clifton Union Cemetery meeting, but we will have one. But now that, yeah, now that we have um, our annual... Well, we um, need to do it before planting gets distracting. Planting. So the board members aren't out on the tractor. Okay. Well, you are not going to be on a tractor, and you're not going to be on a tractor. He better be. Waddle well, might be. Yeah. Well, might be uh, yeah, well, well I, 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 now I just tonight got the um, got the information that I needed to call the meeting, so it will be happening. <coughs> um, Yellow Springs Community Development Corporation. Uh, nothing significant from. My last report, but I, I confirm that our representative, um, Corey Van Osdell, is now the president of the commission or of the corporation. Uh, and we enjoyed her being right. at the last meeting and no information. Uh, no new headline on that. Um, I guess that's all for me. Um, next one, I guess I should have done all mine at the same time. Uh, Grinnell Mill, we have a uh, draft lease between the between the mill and, um, or between the township and Glen Helen, and Glen Helen is reviewing it from their end. And we hope to have that uh, meeting on the 25th. Uh, yeah, that'd be next Friday, right? So we'll see how how that came out. And Marilyn's not here for the final one. Okay. The other meeting is this coming Friday, the 25th. Is it this Friday? Yeah, it's 21st. Oh, yeah, it's this. This coming Friday. Just so you know. Thank you. Any new business before the board this afternoon, this evening? Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Nothing on my mind. Any old business to come before the board this afternoon? Good, straight, yeah. Well, hey, I can go recall the goals. <laughs> Hearing none, and the chief left us, although we left this little diary. Maybe we should read his diary and see if it's <laughs> just, just adjourn first. I was going to ask for a motion, but before we adjourn, okay. Uh, how disruptive would it be if I missed the second meeting in June? Potentially catastrophic, but this would be what? June 20th is the second Monday. And I plan not to be here. Well. Let's plan on it then. Okay. We could say, go down on the second meeting of June. Go down on the 22nd of June. On the 20th. On the 20th. No Marilla today, no down on the 20th. Where is it? No? I could entertain a motion. I, I move for adjournment on the second. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Oh,
Would you turn the camera on, please? Thank you, everyone, for 